Now, come in David Barnson, the Barnson Group Managing Partner. Are you buying anything right now, David Barnson? Uh, sure. We've been buying throughout the week, just deploying cash that we had kind of safeguarded for a week like this. And so we've deployed across the equity portfolio where we had cash as dry powder. But then at this point, we've kind of put our positions on. And I think asset allocators like us have to okay. let it play out because you're, you're in the position you're in. Uh, bonds can certainly be lightened a little bit with yields this low. Uh, but, but we can't do it as a timing mechanism, Stuart. Okay, but do you, uh, do you see any sign of a bottom? Yeah, so from a technical standpoint, this is panic selling. And when you get to a point where the VIX breaks out to near 50, um, that's, that's when you're close to a bottom. I've gone through it about 25 times in history mm -hmm. that the VIX has exploded like this. And all 25 times you had a higher return in the market 90 days later. The, the problem is that doesn't mean it doesn't go lower Monday or Tuesday. Sure. So I don't worry about those things for my clients. My clients have longer than a two-day and two-week timeline, but I don't want to give any of our viewers the impression that we're calling a bottom in 72 hours. We just can't do it, as you know. Let me relate to you something which I think did help the market. About an hour ago, we began an interview with Larry Kudlow, the president's top economic advisor, and he said, one of the things that he said really caught my attention. He said that the administration is concerned considering targeted help for those individuals and groups of individuals who may have been hurt by the virus. People who've lost pay, for example, or perhaps people who couldn't pay their medical bills because of the virus. That seemed to lift the market. Do you think, David Barnson, that that kind of targeted approach, targeted putting money out there is a good thing? It would all depend on the execution. In theory, I always love the idea of less government intervention than more. However, I certainly understand there's pockets here where there can be meaningful and helpful and acceptable intervention. I'm far more in favor of targeted stimulus than broad-based yeah. Obama-type stimulus across the economy, and by the way, than monetary stimulus, which is utterly worthless in this environment. Yeah, I think that's pretty much exactly what Larry Kudlow had to say, as a matter of fact. Uh, David Well, Deets. Larry and I say the exact same thing pretty much all the time, Stuart. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I knew that. And I know you're good friends with him, too. All right. Just moments ago, we were talking about remdesivir, which is a treatment, uh, apparently a successful treatment for the symptoms of this virus. Gets you, doesn't cure it, but gets you through it. And that is made by Gilead Sciences. David Barnson, I think you own a piece of Gilead Sciences. Well, my question is, are you going to buy any more? Oh, yes, we've been buying through the whole period. And understand, Stuart, we are not just buying in response to the news that they have a therapeutic here that we believe is going to be effective. We've owned it before, and we want to continue owning it because this is a dividend-growing biotech company. But it does just so happen that it's up 17% through this whole period, so it's been somewhat defensive in a period that lacks anything. But the part that wasn't said on the segment before that I wanted to add that I think is really important, they don't have the final approval yet. They're waiting on testing to come back in China. We're expecting it back the second week of April. The FDA has really gone quickly here to expedite the sort of investigative approvals that they need. But they are ramping up and repurposing current manufacturing capacity in preparation for that approval. That's how much optimism that they have. So nobody knows until you get the approval. Mm. But we believe that there is a, a therapeutic that is a treatment, not a vaccine, that's going to be very effective in the marketplace from a dividend growing profitable company in Gilead. I know you invest in dividend growing stocks. Can you give me another? I mean, I've seen some of these stocks depressed way, way down. And that, of course, raises the yield, the dividend yield. Can you give me a company, a stock, which is all the way down, yielding a ton of money in dividend, like, say, 8 or 9%, and where that dividend is safe? Can you name one? Well, I can, I, not necessarily 8 or 9, but 7-ish okay. at Simon Property Group. 
Yeah. Who? Okay. Well, I would take seven too when it's a very solid, dependable, steady dividend that right now you can get over 7% with Simon Property. Oh. They will not be cutting the dividend. It's being paid from net operating income. They have significant cash on the balance sheet, and it's just simply part of this sell-off that we've seen play, take place. People are very afraid of the energy companies right now with oil at 42, 43. That's, of course, a great time to be buying them, not selling them. The idea that ExxonMobil, which never cut its dividend through the Exxon Valdez problem, is right now yielding close to 7%. Uh, people are not going to be able to buy these levels in the near future. Exxon and Simon are my two names for you right now, Stuart. Okay, thank you very much, David.